we're going to make a difference in Silicon Valley in the next two years. We are going to make a difference in Silicon Valley in the next two years. We are going to make a difference in Silicon Valley in the next two years. We are no longer standing by. We are no longer sitting and watching what's going on around us. We are going to make a difference in Silicon Valley. We ask you to partner with us as we do that. Here's a young lady that I had the pleasure of meeting back in Washington, D.C. in the hallway of the Values Voter Summit just after she had spoken to the 2,500 people that were assembled there. By the way, I have to tell you that she had them, they were riveted to their seats. This is a young lady that at age 15 founded an organization called Live Action, which is a nonprofit with several uh, chapters in California. It's a youth-led organization, uses new media to educate and mobilize both local and national audiences to, to demand accountability from the abortion industry and human rights for the pre-born. That's their mission statement. Here's the good part. Lila Rose has led numerous undercover stings into Planned Parenthood centers throughout the United States of America. I got to tell you, I'm 65 years old. I don't know if I've got guts enough to go in and, and do something like that, but this young lady has felt called to do that. She has appeared on The O'Reilly Factor, Hannity's America, The Glenn Beck Show, EWTN, The Laura Ingram Show, and now to top off all of her great public appearances, she is here today <laughs> at the Values Advocacy Council. Hey, you know, I could go on and on about her. We have on your table or on your desk, there, there we have uh, Lila's bio. This is a lady that is, that is putting her money where her mouth is. She made a decision a long time ago that life is important enough to take a risk. She has done that. She is doing that today, and she will continue to do that in the future. I present to you a marvelous, exciting, gutsy young lady, Lila Rose. Lila. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I've got to say that this is definitely my favorite place to speak because it's San Jose, my hometown, and because my grandmother is here. Thank you for being here, Grandma. And my mother is here, and many friends and other family-like members are here today, and members of the Live Action team, and all of you who have been involved in such wonderful work, and I'm learning more about just by being here today, but such wonderful work to stand up and to get out there and take a risk, get out there and put up a fight for values, for family values in your community, to not just stay, be on the sidelines. That is so awesome and so amazing, and I'm just so excited to be among all of you. So thank you for having me. About a year and a half ago, I was in Los Angeles. That's where I live. I'm from there. I just got off a plane from New York, and now I'm going back to LA soon, just flying about doing different pro-life meetings and strategy sessions. But a year and a half ago, I was on a sunny day in Los Angeles. I graduated recently from UCLA. Um, Woohoo, go Bruins. Any Bruins out there? Any USC? Oh, there's a Bruin. A oh, USC. OK, I've got up my eye on you then. OK. <laughs> but um, in Los Angeles, I was speaking at this church a year and a half ago, still a college student at the time and in the middle of my talk it was a pro-life talk and in the middle of the talk this woman walks into the back of the room and she's looking very grumpy very upset maybe she ha got you know stuck in that horrible traffic which is not fun and after my talk she came up to me this woman that I had noticed and she shook my hand and she introduced herself as a member of the board of the Planned Parenthood Federation of America and I said 
all of you. <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to see you in church. I, I didn't say nice to see you in church, but I just said, nice to meet you. And she said, nice to meet you too. She said, you know, I heard that you would be speaking here. This was a well-known church on Sunset Boulevard, so very Beverly Hills, nice area. She says, you know, I heard you'd be speaking here, so I thought that I had to stop by and give you some advice as a mom. Funny that she would say, as a mom, when she's advocating as the board of the Planned Parenthood Federation of America for the very violence that denies mothers their motherhood, that takes away that, that feeling of love, that feeling of joy, that peace, and brings so much heartache. And so she said, I said to her, well, what would that be? What would your advice be? I really wanted to know what she had to say. And she said, you know what, young lady, I think you could have a bright future in front of you, but you have to stop saying in your media or your, to the news or to your, in your speeches or whatever it is, wherever you go, you have to stop using the phrase pro-abortion. Say pro-choice. <laughs> and I said to her, you know, you came all the way here to tell me this, though. I said, why, what's so wrong with saying pro-abortion? What's so wrong with that term? And she said, well, it's an inaccurate term. Being, we're not pro-abortion, we're, we're pro-choice. And I said, well, what's so wrong with being pro-abortion? What's so wrong with abortion? And she said, well, abortion is just a very difficult decision. That's why it's just difficult, a difficult term. And I said to her, well, what makes abortion so difficult? Why is it such a difficult decision? And she said, it's just personal and it's just offensive. Well, why is it so offensive? And we went in circles a few times and there was a few people crowding around at this point and I quickly realized that this board member of the Planned Parenthood Federation of America, which is the biggest abortion chain in the United States and the biggest political proponent, not only here in the US, but internationally of pushing abortion onto other countries. I realized that she would not be able to answer this question, what's so wrong with abortion? For if she did, and I pray one day she can, she would look face head on her whole life's work contradiction while she worked at Planned Parenthood. That while she's advocating for women, and for the rights of women, and what she thinks is reproductive freedom, and what she thinks is choice, she's really advocating for the killing of millions, millions of tiny little women across the world every year and millions of tiny little men. We have to pray for this woman and the many like her, that my, their minds and their hearts are so shifted, are so distorted, that they think that they're doing justice, they're doing something even compassionate, when really they're a part of what I believe is the greatest human rights abuse that our country faces today, which is the killing of the most innocent and the most defenseless among us. After all, After all, we're here pretty aware of government in this room, I would imagine, and pretty aware of legislation and the importance of good laws. And I think we'd all agree that a good law is really meant to do justice and to protect people that can't protect themselves. Laws that are meant to really make sure that society operates so that people that are weak and defenseless are protected. But what does it mean when our nation, which is built on the right to life fundamentally, has laws that actually turn against the weakest among us? What does it mean when we have a Supreme Court that has made the killing of the most defenseless among us a constitutional right? What have we come to? And this extends not just beyond our nation as a whole from the top, but it goes to the very heart of the matter. It's not just a political issue, but it's a matter that affects each one of us, even if we haven't personally had an abortion, even if we don't even know someone who's personally had an abortion. Although the statistics are now that one out of almost every three women in our nation have had an abortion. So I'd imagine that many of us have been affected by it. But even if we aren't directly affected by it, we are the, my generation is missing people in our classrooms. We're missing people at the grocery store. We're missing people in our churches. We're missing people in our communities because they didn't make it. They weren't, they weren't allowed. They didn't make it to be born because they were killed before they had a chance to even be born. So this is why I believe that the numbers and the the, the greatness of this injustice makes it the greatest abuse, human rights abuse, the greatest political issue, the greatest moral issue that we face as